Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Investigamer, and I hope you enjoyed my finally released review of Dying Light. It took a long time, and it was a long time coming, but it's finally out, and hey, I think a lot of you guys liked it. But some of you guys didn't like it, and I can understand that. A lot of times in these reviews, I just, you know, I try to keep them condensed so that it doesn't bore people, and a lot of times, whenever I talk about the things I don't like or the things I do like, I don't get to expand upon some of those ideas. And so that's why I make these vlogs, to talk at detail and start a discussion about ways that we can improve games. And I really think there are three things that could be improved in Dying Light, and a lot of you guys talked about them and mentioned them in the comments, and we had some back and forth discussions about it, so let me expand upon those. The first and foremost thing that everyone mentioned was the numbers, 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 numbers comment. And uh, some people totally got it, and other people just said, well, you know, RPG players, they love their numbers. They love having complete control over everything and getting to see uh, what the strength of this is and what the reload speed of that is and, you know, having complete detail. And I can understand that. In a game that is more strategic, in a game that relies primarily on strategy, that would, I'd be all for that. But this is not really a strategic game. This is the type of game that I would want a strong, very developed story from. So I was really looking for ways that this game could have decreased some of the superfluous bullshit and made the story stronger. Ways that they could have, uh, you know, spent less time here and then put money into the story, which I really wanted to see, honestly. Of course, the voice actors were so fucking bad in some cases, it wouldn't matter what script they had in front of them. <laughs> they, they wouldn't have made it any better. In any case, let's talk about numbers. I think this stuff is not necessary in many cases. Like I said, in a strategic game, yeah, but just as an example, in a lot of these shooting games, you have categories of weapons. You've got your Glocks, which is a pistol. It's good for short and mid-range, and it shoots pretty fast. Then sometimes you get a revolver. Shoots slow, but it's really powerful. Then you get your snipers, long-range only, pretty much. Uh, really powerful. You got your uh, good close-range power weapon, the shotgun. And then you got, uh, you know, mid-range rifles and assault rifles for combat. Just general combat, short to mid-range. Now, I feel like all of these categories have their own specific point to them. Each of these categories do something. They accomplish something. You know, one thing is for short range, one thing is for long range, one thing is for really long range. And so you wouldn't want to compare amongst those. You're never going to take a shotgun and compare the stats of the shotgun to a pistol. It's just unnecessary. They do different things. They serve different purposes. The shotgun, close range, pistol, long range, or, I mean... <laughs> short to mid-range, something that you just can pull out and pop, 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 whatever. But you would never compare them cross-category. That just doesn't make sense. So then you might say, well, you compare them within the category. You may find three different pistols and you gotta find out which one of those is good for a certain thing. I don't think that's necessary. Like I said, strategy game, yeah. But within a category, if you take three Glocks and you line them up and one's uh, good for long range and one's good for short range and uh, one just has a really fast reload speed or a really huge clip, all these weapons do is shoot a bullet and kill things. And if I wanted to shoot it a different way, I would probably just go to the assault rifle. Or if I wanted a long range, I wouldn't get a, a, a scoped pistol, I'd go to the sniper rifle. You know, in a game like Dying Light, this kind of stuff doesn't matter. And this applies more to the melee weapons in Dying Light, but this kind of stuff just does not matter, folks. Sometimes it really just doesn't matter. And at the end of the day, why would you compare all the stats of a pistol to another pistol? Because in my opinion, in a game like this where strategy is absolutely not necessary, you got three pistols, one's level 5, one's level 7, one's level 10. The stats should just go up uniformly. Uh, you know, one pistol should be clearly better than the last one, and the one above that should be clearly better than that one. You shouldn't be carrying around four different pistols that all do different things. When I could have a shotgun, a sniper rifle, an assault rifle, and a pistol, all doing different jobs. That is fine with me. None of, none of the perks really affect any of that, to be perfectly honest, it mostly affects your character and how you play the character. It doesn't affect the individual firing speed and everything. I digress. In any case, I feel like if we didn't spend all this time making a barrage of different weapons that all really do the same thing, but have slightly different numbers, then we could spend more time on quests, which is my second point. 
most of you agree with me on this, but the quests in Dying Light, and a lot of games, frankly, are just too fucking boring and too fucking simple. And the same thing I've done three or four different times in a billion other games. You know, go here, collect this many items, go here, kill this many people, go here and flick a fucking power switch. We need you to get the power generator back on, get the water treatment back on, uh, go turn these lights on, go get 10 health vials. It's the same bullshit I've done a billion other times, folks. Take a note from Fallout and Elder Scrolls. Just the other day, I, I haven't played a lot of the Fallout DLC and someone was telling me about uh, the, the burned man in Fallout New Vegas. This guy who got uh, burnt alive because he couldn't take the dam and then they tossed him into the Grand Canyon and he actually lived and he's this crazy uh, religious dude. And you know, that stuff is beautiful when they actually put depth and creativity in their into their quests and there's humor to it. And oh, the Oblivion quest I mentioned in the review, um, it's a Dark Brotherhood quest. We were sent into this house and everyone was told that there's treasure hidden somewhere in the house and each of you have a chance to find it. So you like go and talk to people here and talk to people there and you kind of trick them to kill one another. You can lure them into the basement and slit their throat and then go upstairs and everyone is suddenly thinking, oh, there was a murder. Someone in here is a murderer. I gotta watch my back now so you like form allegiances with people and you use illusion to trick people into doing what you want. Uh, I just ended up getting pretty much everyone except for two people to kill one another and it's it was hilarious. That's the kind of quest that I want in a game. I want a quest that makes me think. I want a quest that creates something called feelings. You know, I'm not a robot. I don't just like being given orders, go complete them and then I now have 25 extra XP, thank you. I will do my next quest, go collect 10 diglets. I, it's, it's not necessary. The third thing I want to talk about is the protagonist. Um, I'm sure most of you who've played this game agree that most of the characters in the game, by and large, they just suck. <laughs> They're not developed, the voice acting is atrocious. But people are split on the main character. Uh, I did notice a lot of you did like him, but a lot of you didn't. And one person said uh, you thought that he didn't really blend in with the world. He was, uh, he didn't really give a shit that all this shitty things were going on around him. He didn't really care about the fact that everyone was suffering. Uh, he would just kind of see this shit and he, you know, if you were playing it a certain way, he'd just walk by and be like, doo -doo 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 -doo, don't care, don't care. Even though in the main quest, he's saving thousands of people and he wouldn't, you know, he, he won't lie down and let people die without reason. Really, that's not a problem with that character. That's a problem with the game at large, and I totally agree with you. Uh, there is no contextual emotion in that game. There's no contextual storytelling whatsoever. Uh, the environment is completely disconnected from the story at large. There's no uh, fine details to the environment and the lore like you would see in an Elder Scrolls game. There's, there's really absolutely nothing in the environment except for buildings, zombies, a few people here and there who are being attacked that you have to save, and other than that, they didn't put any lore detail whatsoever into the game, um, into the environment at large. It, and that's a problem with the game as a whole. The character himself, Kyle Crane, in my opinion, all of his, his lines in the, in the, in the cutscenes and all of the, the struggles that you go through with him, he's a really cool guy. And he has some badass one-liners. He's kind of act out of a, a good action movie. But the rest of the game is not a good action movie. Uh, by the way, these glasses are fucking coming apart. I'm getting some new ones soon, but uh, all of you who keep calling me hipster, <laughs> get them out fast. Get the hipster comments out fast because I'm getting new glasses and they probably won't look like this. They might, they might, but I don't know. I'm looking over a couple of different styles and trying to choose something that I can live with for the next year or two. In any case, uh, Kyle Crane, I love this character. I really do. I think he's he's pretty pretty well developed, but you're right. None of the characters at all have really any connection to what's going on in the environment. And you won't go and find a book in the environment that tells a story that's completely out of the main point of the game. Uh, there, there's just, there's no real lore. There's just the main campaign, random hangers on around the area, and nothing else. It, it's, it's not deep, guys. I'm gonna say that right now. If you're looking for story, not the game for you, not one bit. I think that's about it that I wanted to talk about. If you had any other questions about my review, about Dying Light, uh, if you need a second opinion, 
just drop me a line, leave a comment, ask other people in the comments what they thought. My next review is gonna be a spotlight of the fall. I've been playing it my second time through. I've already got all my footage, so I'm gonna start writing that bad boy right now. Hopefully have it out this Thursday. If not, it'll definitely be Friday or Saturday. I forget when my next day off of work is. Anyways, that's all I got, dudes and duders. So I will see you very soon. Please share this with your friends on Facebook and Twitter and blah, 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 if you liked it and if you want to spread these ideas and, you know, help make this channel possible. And uh, once again, thank you very much to the people on Patreon who have been supporting this channel in the past and helped me get out of poverty. Uh, still kind of in poverty, but I'm making my way downtown. Walking fast, faces pass. Uh, I'm going to leave before this gets any worse.